Hi everybody and welcome to this very special episode. These two guys over my shoulder are the crew, the film crew, that makes Nick on the Rocks episodes on Cascade PBS. You already know the guy in the red shirt, that's Gary Paul. But beyond him is Brady Lawrence, who's the main videographer who's filming right now for this episode in Anacortes in Fidago Island. In this episode today, can I introduce you please to Brady, show you how he operates in the field, and at the very end of this video, a short note on how you might directly support future episodes of this program. Thanks, let's get started. Uh, I've always been a big, uh, or just have been very into cycling and skiing and the outdoors and, and all that, and so sort of uh, fell into, semi-accidentally into documentary filmmaking and then sort of outdoor adventure filmmaking. And yeah, by way of all that sort of science yeah. outdoor filmmaking, which is where, where we are now. I'm just a really curious person. Yeah. I will end up, you know, on like doing Wikipedia benders, that right. kind of person where I just like read a bunch of random stuff that I don't know. Uh, so I think that, I think a lot of documentary filmmakers are kind of like that as well, where you're just really curious about a lot of things and uh, that sort of lends itself to the, the profession. Um, gonna go get this boat. Uh, but yeah, geology specifically, uh, always thought it was cool, especially because, you know, I've always thought the obvious stuff like big mountains and volcanoes are cool. But, um, yeah, definitely, definitely know a ton more now than I ever thought I would. I think I've been doing this for long enough that I occasionally have trouble separating the audience from myself, okay. which is a little bit of an occupational hazard. Um, so a little bit of both, maybe unfortunately. Um, but I like to think that I'm just thinking about it in a way that, A, most importantly, how can this be communicated visually um, on site and not just uh, told. Right. Uh, which you're very good at and you don't need me for. You're, you have your lecture series, you have your all those things, which is you telling people things. Right. Um, and so... I feel like what I bring to this is is thinking about, okay, well, so Nick's really good at telling people things. How do we tell them and show them at the same time so they have both things I want? So I just try to think about it really visually, like how do you how do you communicate this story? With visuals, can you do it with visuals alone? Obviously, most of the time with the geology stuff, not really is the answer. Um, at least it would be hard to do pure visual storytelling. Um, well, yeah, so we, we, I feel like we, we try to strike a little bit of a balance. If you came out here and you're like, okay, I'm going to do my one or two takes, uh, and that's it. So if that were the case, uh, you know, we'd want to really have everything on the video sound side totally dialed from the gun. Uh, but that, as you know, is not the case for us. We, we're doing... You, you, you do one you don't like, I do one that I mess up, you do one you don't like, I mess one up, you know. Uh, we're, we, we have a lot of, with the one person kind of show thing, uh, you have to have some flexibility because there's, I'm, I'm controlling for, you know, whatever, five to six different variables at all times. And yeah. so, the, you know, you have to wait for the magic to, to hit and the, the right one to work. Yeah, well, so in my job, I was involved with managing the wilderness areas over there on the horizon yeah. and the trails and worked with the people that did the actual work uh, on the ground. Um, and that involved a lot of uh, a lot of paperwork, which I really tried to keep that to a minimum so I could spend more time out in the field learning about learning about the trails, the bridges, the uh, overlay of uh, different type of uh, private lands, state lands, and national forests to uh, kind of figure out how we could get things get things done. Uh, for this season, well, we worked uh, here just in the last few weeks with the uh, parks manager here in Anacortes. And um, he was 
very very good very uh, easy to work with and we got uh, permission to go ahead quickly uh, we had a couple other false starts in some other areas where um, managers just didn't really not want us to film because they didn't want to attract more people to the area um, huh. it'd be hard to attract more people to Anacortes than they're already here yeah. <laughs> I think come on yeah Looking forward to making some uh, good contacts with the national park, which shouldn't be too hard. I'm going to try to push that a little bit, maybe this co in the coming week, and not for maybe not for the season, but for the uh, for the future, because there's actually some pretty cool rocks inside of our national parks here, yeah. which may come to, as a shock to some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not quite sure how we're going to end up, but I know we have uh, one that was on hold from last year for Washington Pass. Okay. And we didn't get to film that because it was all smoky last uh, last fall, but we're going to do that early this year. And then we've got one coming up where we're going to go uh, to a, a location where we can see Glacier Peak, one of our other big stratovolcanoes. It's number four on the list in elevation for the state, but it's still pretty impressive. But it's way back in the way back in the wilderness, and uh, I think just given the um, you know what our capabilities are right now i mean we can't hire a pack string or right. things like that but we can get to a point where we can uh, see the mountain in a day and uh, we're talking a little bit about mount index as being a interesting target for a show well i think uh, just I, I do know the state pretty well sure, and uh and this is the incredible variety of rocks the disneyland i heard it compared to up here for geologists so I have a pretty good overview of the whole state that way and so just kind of from the 30,000 foot view looking down it's like where has we not seen Nick on the rocks in the past yeah. and where would be some cool spots to go to and this one's a pretty cool spot and uh, I think you know maybe uh, maybe next year we take a ferry boat and go over to San Juan or Orcas where there's some other they have rocks over there too. They do. This looks all beveled. This all, looks all sculpted. There's a young story here. This is too high. Uh, if you walk in this way, is it about the same? Like if you walk from there Fortis, to the here? Gateway and bedrock. This is all bedrock from the edge of the diamond. Getting the right lighting here. I mean, that, that's a long walk, but... Well, give me a sec, let's see. If you start, excuse me here, if you start maybe right here, and then you walk to this one, so if this is your walk. Condom. Yeah, from yeah. here to here, where you're like by this rock, yeah. with these in the background, I think that would probably be doable. Perfect, good. And even the hills behind our skull. Yeah. That's perfect. And we kind of want to wind up here with look at that. Look at that. We got Nick standing on rocks from the age of the dinosaurs, and he's going to talk something about this theory of about ice sheets pouring over this landscape 15,000 years ago. Kind of like slow molasses coming out of Canada crawling down across the border no passport and this burying the anacortis does this all also do the trick this kind of stuff up here or is this not as good here we go here we go and anacortis washington the gateway to the san juan islands here in western washington it's a beautiful spot and there's bedrock everywhere. And the bedrock is incredibly old, 160 million year old bedrock from the age of the dinosaurs. That's one reason to come here. But another reason to come here on Fidalgo Island is that there's a very young story. 15,000 years ago, everything got sculpted, beveled, fluted, streamed over. What happened here 15,000 years ago to do that? Wait, I think that's a keeper. Good. Of the scenery. Uh, yeah. It 
it's a, it can be a bit of a ungainly lens, I think, for other things, but it's, you don't uh, use any filters or anything on that when you're <laughs> shooting. No, there's just a one little protective, protective piece of glass there in case I drop it. So you get the real thing there. Yeah, yeah. The real thing, yeah. Save uh save any tweaks for for post production, I suppose. Um, how much does that tripod of yours weigh? Uh, it is heavier than I'd want it to be, probably, but it's, uh... Yeah, I guess I should know. I carried it up. <laughs> it is, it is, it's, it is carbon fiber, I guess, which so... Which uh, a lot. Which makes it a little, a little nicer. Um, yeah, cool. I'm gonna keep filming bits, bits of rock, I think. Professionally, I've been making movies for, I guess... I think 11 years now uh, so it's it's definitely been it's been a slow a slow evolution over time to You've been in Seattle in the, the whole time? I have not I've been in Seattle for just over five years I moved here kind of on a whim in 2018 started freelancing out here and then started filming with Nick uh, last year. Last year, what fun that has been! Looks like you put on the 24 to 105 there. Yeah, Can so get some uh, sexy shots of the rocks here. <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm gonna do now is just put on what's called an easy rig uh, and just walk around and and kind of see see what kind of scenics inspire me we've already shot two little Nick interviews today so far and so this kind of the way I'm about to set it up we've got a little 30 minute window before we do our next bit and so I'm gonna go try to get as much uh, kind of coverage or b-roll of things that Nick referenced as possible. The big microphone you got on there, Brady. <laughs> yep. Had a cat that looked like that once. Yep. The aptly named dead cat. Morbid name for a piece of gear. Uh, yeah, Nick, how do you want to, how do we want to do this? Just do your thing. I'll just follow you a little bit and if, if one of us asks you a question or two, if it's not too distracting to keep talking to us. Okay. Is that too distracting? No, 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 okay. definitely not. Is it going to get in the way of your video if you're talking? Um, it's not that big a deal. Well, I'll get, I'll get some quiet bits. Okay. This is the, uh, the great saver of my back. This is my, uh... Good Lord! <laughs> what's this extra screen you got on there what does that do for you is that um, just so you can see better what's yeah what you're shooting so it's really bright out right now and so this is just to uh yeah really be able to tell what's going on I'm just starting to get the really good light. Get a nice little uh, fairy shot here. Again? Apparently there's fairies in the area. An iconic, iconic part of uh, the Northwest, for oh, sure. Oh, look at that. Starting to pop. Let's use it. Yeah. I mean, this thing get in the way of. Oh yeah. I'll go get uh, some of the green rock again. And yeah. I think that's about it.
So that's us. That's the filming crew. Two and a half guys, basically. Sometimes it's all three of us. Sometimes it's just Brady and myself at these beautiful locations here in the Pacific Northwest. So at the end of each episode, this is what the credits look like. There's the three of us. Sarah Mendes is the executive producer. There's other talented people who are contributing things kind of behind the scenes with their talents. But there's another way to contribute, and that is financially. And the next slide that usually crops up, in fact, it always crops up after that slide, is this one. And I want to let you know that a couple in Seattle, John Lawrence and Adele Morrill, single-handedly resuscitated this series called Nick on the Rocks. So they noticed that there were a few years where nothing was happening. During the pandemic, this whole thing shut down. And John and Adele said, we'd like to get this thing back going again. So they were the major contributors, single-handedly, the couple, brought this thing back to life. So for this season and beyond, in addition to John and Adele, I'm opening it up to you guys and wondering if you might want to add a few dollars to supporting this geology series. We're proud of it. And if you like what you see with these episodes, you might want to consider contributing as well. And so how do you do that, you say? I'm here to the very end. Well, this is the slide that's going to help you with that. Nice logo. Here's a web address, cascadepbs.org backslash Nick. You can type that into your web browser and get to a page where you can contribute to this series. Or if you're pretty snazzy with your phone, you can take your phone right now hover with your camera on your phone on this QR code, and that will take you to the web page. What does the web page look like, you say? I say, what does it look like? It looks like this. So this is the landing spot. This is the target for you to go. And you're here at the very end, so I'm guessing that you want to make this happen. So thank you for your interest. Get to a page that looks like this. Support Nick on the Rocks. You can choose whichever dollar value you're comfortable with. And I guarantee that each of your dollars goes directly to our series. Let me say that again. Whatever dollar amount you donate on that page goes specifically to our little crew of three guys. And it contributes directly to all the expenses involved in making the series. It's a real thrill to make these episodes for you. I'll give you one more chance to look at it just in case you want to grab it. And yes, there's something called PBS pa Cascade PBS Passport, which is an app that allows you to get to other programs as well. But those are just added benefits for you to adding to our series. It's really the dollar values that we're talking about that is the main line for getting into the future of our series. And so, dear viewer, I say, thanks for watching this Behind the Seas episode. Here's to your health. And if you choose to contribute, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you. I love you. And goodbye from Ellensburg, Washington, USA.